And Nicole, you are ready to drive, correct? All right. All right. Nicole's going to go ahead and share the screen. And we'll go back to the first slide there, Nicole. Sorry about that. And everyone can hear me okay? Because I'm on my phone now. And I cannot see myself. Okay. Great. Thank you, Lauren, for responding. Um, I'm going to put my phone here so I'm not. Well, hi everyone. Um, thanks for joining the Open Application Q&A. My name is Carol Lavoy schuster and I'm the Vice President for Grants and Services at ECCF. And I'm going to be walking you through the guidelines for our new open application process for our um, Essex County COVID-19 Response Fund. And we only have an hour. So I'm going to talk just for a short amount of time, and then we'll leave most of the time open for Q&A. Nicole, if you can go ahead and advance to the agenda. And just to set the foundation, I wanted to, to give a quick overview of the fund, where we are to date. Then I'll move into the open application guidelines and deadlines. And then we'll move again into the open Q&A. If you have not had a chance yet to review the complete guidelines, you can see the link here below on the screen where you can review the complete set of information. You can either follow along, but you'll also notice that um, all of the information, much of it is uh, on my deck as well. Can you go ahead and advance, Nicole? So the COVID-19, the Essex County COVID-19 Fund, as the early days of um, the pandemic evolved in March. ECCF, like many of our sister community foundations, was called to action. And our, our board called us to action, the community called us to action, and we established a um, COVID-19 response fund. And on March 20th, we officially opened the fund. The fund was designed to focus on supporting nonprofit organizations who are serving the most vulnerable and underserved populations in Essex County. And we developed, uh, along with our staff and our leadership, we, de we developed a diverse advisory committee that really has helped to guide and advise us in our work. And we've met every week along the way. Um, as our work evolved uh, very quickly, we were gathering quantitative and qualitative data through intensive surveying and waves and waves of hundreds and hundreds of calls to nonprofits. Um, to ensure that we were getting the most accurate data as the pandemic evolved, to ensure that we were meeting the most critical needs in the county. And the part of the goal of the fund was to activate the resources through rapid, unrestricted, um, and responsive grants focused on basic needs. And through the data research, um, we focused, you'll, if you saw any of the press releases that came out, we focus each week on a new pressing area, such as healthcare, hunger, emergency shelter, emergency childcare, elders, intellectual and physical disabilities, mental health, financial relief to the economically disadvantaged, and summer food. Um, we're about to announce a new round of rent relief grants next week. And all told, uh, that would be inclusive of the rent relief, we've done eight rounds of grants. Part of what we've done is at about week three, we partnered with the Mass COVID Fund, which was started uh, by uh, First Lady Lauren Baker and a number of private foundations. And it's all private philanthropy, it's not state money. Their goals of their foundation, as well as our fund, were very much aligned. And so we've been able to leverage those resources to really infuse more capital into Essex County, which has been really tremendous. The difference with their fund is that they are focused 100% on immediate crisis mitigation and their fund will be winding down the end of this month. Um, and therefore that was kind of part of our strategy of moving into this new open application phase. Our total grant making to date is just over 4.3 million. 
and um, the highest amounts were distributed to financial relief for economically disadvantaged, hunger, as well as health care. You can go ahead and move forward, Nicole. So in this new recovery phase that opened on July 1, we have a number of priorities. We have three priority areas that I'll share more in detail in a second. They are health and mental health, economic security, and education and youth. And we're really focused on organizations serving the most vulnerable, and that would include seniors, communities of color, underserved youth, immigrants, individuals with intellectual and physical disabilities, as well as other vulnerable populations. We're really, really focused on organizations, organizations who are expanding and or pivoting their operations to address the most pressing issues in their community and that have stepped up in significant ways due to COVID. Um, and it's a it's a nuance, but it's a it's a it's a really important piece of this work is that we want to invest in those organizations who are working, you know, either through expansion again of their existing work due to COVID or have pivoted in significant ways. Our priority will be on organizations based here in Essex County. You can certainly apply if you are based outside of the county. However, you do need to demonstrate a significant amount of your population being served is, is based in Essex County. Um, an equity lens is very important, has been very important to all of our decision making, and that will certainly uh, be the case with this. And we will be making sure that your decision making is inclusive of a variety of perspectives that would be gender, race, ethnic backgrounds, and other community perspectives. Um, and those of you who are, are familiar with ECCF would know that for the last three or four years, ECCF has been very uh, committed to our systems approach in the community and working collectively with the community on moving things at a population level scale. And that would be inclusive of working with our municipal partners, nonprofit, philanthropic, corporate partners, and so any collaborative or systems approaches will be prioritized as we go through the rubric and the um, grants decision making process. You can go ahead and advance, Nicole. In terms of amounts, grants will range anywhere between 5,000 and 50,000. And organ single organizations will be asked to apply only once. Uh, for all three categories. However, if you are part of a partnership, you could be part of a second application in another category, if that makes sense. Um, and to, to continue on that, in, in, in instances where collaborations or partnerships, systems approaches are regional or county-wide, county um, ECCF will consider proposals that exceed $50,000. We do request that any of the partnerships or collaborations have been established prior to the application. We don't want organizations to have to reinvent the wheel to go out and find new partners. There should already be a gelled relationship. Perhaps you haven't worked together specifically yet, but you may already have a relationship and partnership. Grant funding will be required to be expended within a year. And within that year, um, with all of our COVID work, it's been very important, um, not only with our grant making, but with the use of the, of the money. Uh, we know that the demands and the needs are so extreme um, that we are requiring that you um, are utilizing the resources immediately and or expeditiously. You can go ahead and move forward, Nicole. You'll see here, these are the deadlines and dates uh, for the upcoming cycles. And what we did is there's, as I said, there's three priority areas, health and mental health, economic security, education and youth. And we will focus on one per month for the next three months. Health and mental health is the cycle that is open now. And the deadline is July 31st. 
we will be reviewing over the course of August with notification the end of August. Economic security is, is the open cycle is during the month of August. We will review during the month of September with decisions the end of September. And then education and youth, the cycle opens in September, closes September 30th with decisions the end of October. Um, you'll note if you've gone on and looked at the application, you can actually begin an application for any three of the categories now. We had gotten a number of requests of organizations who like to just get in there and think about it a little bit. Um, we do understand that this is um, not ideal. Uh, if you know, you may you may not have enough. You, you have a little bit more time to prepare if you're in the second or third category. Um, but this was kind of the best, fastest way for us to design it to make it the most streamlined. Go ahead and move forward. So uh, for the three categories, when you look at the full guidelines, you'll see that at the header of each of the three priority areas, we have a paragraph in the opening statement and you'll see that for all of the guidelines, you know, um, we wanted to make sure we lifted up the importance of the racial and systemic inequities that have existed obviously for generations, but that have been um, lifted to the surface more through COVID. And so we, we worked really hard to make sure we were addressing those in each of the three categories. And we put those forward to you as an opportunity to reflect again on the bigger systemic inequities uh, for each of the three categories for you to think about that in your proposals and how you would potentially address them. Um, for health and mental health, applications will be accepted in categories such as public health and community safety. Priorities, of course, will be uh, priority will be given to organizations focused on communities of color, seniors, underserved youth, immigrants, so on and so forth. We're really keen on organizations who are working hard to provide access to quality healthcare advances and focused on advancing um, positive social determinants of health. We're also looking at organizations, uh, both health and mental health, who are looking at more equitable, culturally relevant, um, accessible opportunities for people to access healthcare, but also from a workforce standpoint, we know that um, there is this rising wave and tsunami of mental health needs that um, is certainly on the third providers to be able to meet those needs. And so we're looking for opportunities to invest in um, scenarios such as that. And then an emphasis on technology such as telehealth and again other equitable um, opportunities for people to access quality care. You can go ahead and advance, Nicole. In economic security, we'll be accepting applications in housing, housing insecurity um, focusing on basic needs for housing and homelessness, such as rental assistance, as well as other collaborative or systems approaches. And the same would be for food insecurity, employment opportunities, such as adult -based basic education, workforce training, technical assistance, or small business and get back to business opportunities. In education and youth, Applications will be considered in areas such as technological transformation, social emotional preparation and adaptations, programs addressing learning loss, mentoring or college prep, after school enrichment programs, early childhood development and STEAM programs. Um, and you can see, here's my contact information. We are doing this session, which we are recording as well as we're doing a session next Wednesday from 5 to 6 p.m. We're recording those, we'll be putting those on our website. But if you find you get into your application and you have additional questions, please feel free to contact me. Um, we can coordinate through email or set up a separate call if in fact the um, Q&A session here today or next week is not sufficient and you wish to have 
uh, more clarity or an opportunity to talk about your proposal, I am um, happy to connect. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and open up the floor for q and I'm gonna need Nicole to help me um, identify folks that are raising their hand because as I said I I we lost here we lost power here in Wenham about five minutes ago so I'm on my phone and um, I'll have Nicole let me know who has raised their hand and um, I can answer some questions any questions I'll also invite Beth Francis our CEO who is on the call to step in and and uh, jump in and answer any questions as well Does anybody have any questions? Howard? Yes, thanks. So I've got a, um, a question with respect to which of the three categories we apply for, for basically the same program. It kind of spans two groups. We have clinicians who are uh, on site or in these days kind of via uh, telehealth on site at, in the public schools. They provide mental health services to uh, kids uh, who need them in, in the public schools. They also provide coaching uh, to the teachers. Uh, and one of the, you know, the nice things about being on site is you can observe the kid in the classroom. So anyway, the, the, the question is, do we apply for mental health or do we apply for education and youth? I would suggest uh, mental health, mental health. And, um, you know, if you want to look more in depth at the guidelines and Howard, I'd encourage you. Are you Elliot? Uh, no, the Home for Little Wanderers. Thank you. Um, I think we've been emailing. Is that correct? Yeah. Okay. Um, go ahead and look at the questions or I can send you the PDF. If you log in and create a profile, you can look at all the questions and um, see what you think. And, you know, we would certainly welcome whatever your perspective is, whether it's health, mental health, or education. Um, it really just depends on, you know, how quickly you plan to kind of ramp up this work and the timeline from your own funding perspective. Um, but why don't you look at the questions? And then if you have additional questions, I'd be happy to do a call with you. Great. Thank you. Ruth? Hi everyone, this is Ruth Zames. I'm with the community group. And um, my question is if our organization received funding um, in one of the first rounds, um, are we still eligible to apply for the open fund? Great question and yes, you are. Yeah, great question. Thank you for the clarity that I'll go back and edit the guidelines to make sure that that's a little bit more clear. Thank you, Ruth. Anybody else? Amanda? Hi, uh, my name is Amanda. I'm from Big Sister Boston. Um, I'm, it's a question about what you mean by the significant population served in Essex County. Do you have a number in mind when you're thinking of that? Um, or is it more of a kind of general based on the application? It's more general in terms of the allocation. But if you have specific data you'd like to share I'd be happy in advance of an application I um, I'd be happy to review that and have a conversation um, it looks like Kay Langley also raised a hand yeah hi my name is Karen Langley and I'm with the equipment durable medical equipment reuse program um, we're statewide but we also do quite a lot of business up in Essex County um, I did look at the application. We're looking to go in as a collaboration with another partner that's up in Salem. Um, and I did see that we would be listing out our board of directors and having our past audit, that kind of thing. Would the collaborating partner also submit those or just us as the principal? That is a great question. I would like to see the board of all of the collaborators, but it's not necessary to see the audited financials, just the audited financials just for the lead organization, the lead 501c3, the applicant, if that makes sense. But I am curious to see the board for the different organizations. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Dr. Jeff Lindbergh. 
Uh, so I'm the executive director of Boys for the Better. And so we run um, media literacy based programming for male identifying teens uh, through which we deliver SEL programming. Um, so I have two questions. One is, uh, is there a particular communities in Essex County that you are prioritizing or perhaps leaning away from? Um, and then the second question is uh, programming in which it is embedded within a school, in which the organization does work within a school, is that okay? Or is that something you shy away from? Yeah, great question. Um, for all of our work, we have, for the COVID work, we have focused on the six gateway cities in Essex County, which is Lawrence, uh, Lynn, Salem, Peabody, Methuen, and Haverhill. Um, I think those would be our priorities. Those are uh, the communities where we see the highest disproportional impact. However, um, there's certainly plenty of other communities who don't fit that quote unquote criteria that um, like Gloucester or Beverly who are not definitively gateway cities, but certainly have had significant impact. Um, and then, yes, a partnership with a school would definitely be something we would be open to. Um, I think those important connections between our, our, our municipal partners are really key to the success, particularly around education and youth. So we would welcome that. Hello? Anybody else? Feel free to speak up if you're raising your hand and I just don't see you. Are there any other parts of the guidelines um, that I can expand upon or are there other parts of that people are curious about, about our COVID work. Just while we have the time, we can certainly wrap up early, um, but I just wanna make sure I'm using the time wisely. Howard? Yeah, I guess if, could you expand a bit about um, what uh, constitutes underserved youth? So, you know, our youth um, who, um, are from families that are Medicaid eligible, let's say. Are they by definition underserved because they are low income? Um, or are you kind of getting at something else when you, when you talk about underserved? No, I think that exactly what you said is pri primarily what we are looking at. Um, youth who are coming from families certainly below 50% AMI, more likely focused on you know 20 to 30% AMI. Um, but we want to be open with that because we know particularly, um, you know, particularly in mental health, you know, that spectrum can be much broader than that. And we want to be as inclusive and equitable as possible. But I think that would be the priority. Yeah. Okay. Good. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Laura. Hi, thank you. Um, are you looking, um, say if we have multiple programs in an organization, are you looking to gather information and, and target your funding towards an organization as a whole or specific programs or are we um, free to pick a program that we feel like might be the best fit and focus our application on that program exclusively or should we show you um, the entire way that an organization has pivoted or plans to pivot? I think the entire way the organization has pivoted, you know, we've been really committed to unrestricted grants. We do certainly want to know the ways in which you have stepped up to pivot and significantly expand. Um, but then uh, once the grants are distributed, you know, they would be utilized uh, organizationally. Okay, thank you. Yeah, and then, and then we would have, you know, you would, there would be, 
it would be important to be able to demonstrate how you've delivered upon what you've talked about, what you plan to deliver upon. One of the questions in the proposal will be how will the how will the funds get used? That's where you can get specific as to even though it is unrestricted, give us an idea of where your where the resources would be uh, best used to do the work that you're about to do next. Virtually raise my hand. I'm having video problems. Um, this is Lauren from the NAM project. I have a bit of a nuts and bolts question about money. I know you said between five and fifty thousand. Are you um, is fifty going to be more of a rare scenario? Do you have like an average that you're hoping that people work towards? We don't have an average, you know, this is, I'll be honest, you know, we don't know how many applications we will be getting. I do anticipate the 50 will be rare. Um, and as I said, anything over 50 would really be for very rare cases of collaborations that are regional or countywide. Um, I think a lot will be determined upon the size and scope of the applications per cycle. But I I don't anticipate um, the majority of the grants to be on the larger side because there so is much. so much there is so much need. Yeah. yeah. Sure. Great question, by the way. Okay. Well, I think uh, we had allocated an hour uh, for the for the call, but if we don't have any further questions, we can go ahead and wrap up. Um, the best way to contact me is by email and um, I'll respond promptly. We can certainly coordinate by email or we can set up a time to speak if you do have further questions. Um, and you know we appreciate your time. We appreciate all of your work. I know it's been a really challenging time for everyone, but particularly uh, for those of you on the front line. So we appreciate all of the hard work that you've been doing. And um, we really value our partnership in the community to move things forward. Thank you. Thank you.